Okay, what I'm starting with is one of these reindeer farms from the Dollar Tree. And if you cannot find one of them from the Dollar Tree, I have seen them at Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. So what I did is I just took my heat tool and my uh, spatula and I just, you know, heated it up to get those antlers off as well as the nose because I'm going to paint those a little different color. So what I'm doing is giving it a couple of coats of this uh, brown paint. It is Milk Chocolate by Americana. And then for the antlers, I am using Antique White. Uh, it is also an Americana brand. And But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and fill in those holes so that I don't have, you know, those holes. Uh, I just use some spackle just to fill those in. And then I give those two coats of that. All right, so I'm using this brown color and my fan brush. I'm gonna be using just the end of it. And uh, uh, the brown color is sable brown, also an Americana color. <laughs> you know that I'm Americana paint color fan. Uh, and so I just use uh, just a the end of that, uh, fan brush just to give it a faux plaid pattern. So I just make my stripes like this down and then I'll go back and do them uh, horizontal. So I'm going to use a number 10 flat paintbrush and some uh, black paint and some clean water. And I'm going to be doing some black shading around my reindeer. And so I just dip half of my brush in paint, the other half in clean water, and then I blend on that blue paper towel. And then I just go around the edges, just adding some shading. And I like uh, on these darker colors like this, I like to add black because I feel that it just gives it a depth to it that I like for my projects. Then for my antlers, what I do is I use some milk chocolate paint to do the shading as well with that number 10 flat paintbrush. And uh, just go around that and just add some depth and character and cuteness. Now for the fun part for me is to add cute little whimsical faces. And I do this by just adding, uh, just well actually just drawing two ovals and I like the more slanted or the more uh, almond shape. And so first I do a pencil, then I go back and draw it out with Sharpie. This is just my process, guys. Every painter finds their own way. I'm just kind of sharing what works for me. Then I use a round brush that has a, a more pointed tip on it. And so then I just fill in the ovals with my paintbrush and just make my little eyes like this. And then that round, uh, rounded point of the brush, I just kind of can't just get in there and just really make those eyes as a big as I want them. And so then uh, now I'm gonna use a, a smaller flat paintbrush and some white paint and just give some highlights kind of to the top and just around like maybe the face a bit. As you hear me say, most all of the time, the beauty is in the details. And you can just see right here, just by adding different paint and different highlights, just doodling and adding all the fun touches just really brings this little guy to life. And so then next I'm going to add some cheeks. I like the more rectangle up and down cheeks, but everyone has their own, uh, you know, way of doing things. I'm using barn red, also a stencil brush, and uh, it kind of makes it a little wispy. And so then I kind of dab off a little bit of the brush on the paper towel because I'm not quite sure how dark I want it. And so I just start stippling that on until I like the look. Now on camera, it looks really, really bright. But then once this paint dries, you can see right there how it just turns muted. That's just the, what this, the paint does. So I'm just adding some highlights and then I'll go back with my little detailing brush and add some lines that gives it the really whimsical look that I love for my projects. And so again, and if uh, you're looking for a small detailing brush, you know, a liner brush is what you're going to look for. And then um, 
like I've had this liner brush for many, many years. Uh, some of the bristles have uh, fallen out. And so that's the key is just to find a brush that has just a few bristles. And that gives you these little, uh, you know, little bitty lines like that. All right. So then I go back and add, of course, my black shop and marker because I just love to outline all of my uh, projects because I really feel that that just makes it pop. And then what I'll do is you use this little ultra fine Sharpie marker, just go around and just adding a little bit more detail just to make it pop and just add what I like. And then I'm going to add my, you know, my little squiggly lines of my little doodles. I just love this. And as you can see, like I said, you could just, just with a little paint, you just bring this little character to life. I'm also going to add some eyelashes as well as a fun mouth and all of that good stuff. For his nose, what I'm going to do is um, I took the nose off so that I could paint, but I wanted to move the nose up a bit. And instead of just painting it red, I'm going to be adding some glitter. So I'll show you how to do that next. Before I put the nose on, I wanted to draw a mouth and I just do that with a black Sharpie marker. And so then I use the nose uh, as a guide to help me, you know, figure out the placement of how I wanted the mouth. And I just did that with my black Sharpie marker. And then uh, I have to do it. I love to add black and white splatter paint to my project. So that's what I do. And my method is with a stiff brush. I just uh, run the, the stick over the brush toward my body and then I uh, do black and then I go back over it and do white. And so then for the nose, uh, what I did is I just painted, give it, gave it a coat of red paint and this is primary red. And then uh, it dried really, really quick. So I did have to go back and use some Mod Podge and that glitter color I'm using is Garnet. It's a Martha Stewart color. And so then to, uh, you know, give something for my glitter to stick to, I just used Mod Podge. And so I'm using a, a piece of parchment paper or a paper plate would work as well uh, just to act as a funnel so that I can put the excess glitter back into my my little jar my little tube and so then I gave everything a coat of this varnish that I like to use and uh, then I glue everything down just with E6000 as well as some hot glue just to make sure that everything is secure and then to end it I just put a little swoosh of white paint on the top of the nose. For the little Merry Christmas sign, I had one of these plaques uh, from that wood pile pack that I get from Hobby Lobby. I had already painted a bunch of them um, off white, but um, I wanted to share this with you just to say, just to encourage you, because yes, I do mess up. So I was going to uh, write Merry Christmas, and I did what I encourage you all to do is when before I get started, you know, air draw it just to make sure everything is going to, you know, work out. But no, uh, it wasn't. I did not. My, I got my letters off. So I ended up having to go back, repaint it. And so then um, I just want to encourage you that, yeah, mistakes are going to happen. And so I, that's, I'm just painting a sign and that's what I did. I just went over it, repainted it. And so then now I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint it. Uh, and it turns out, correctly the second time. So then now I'm going to add some shading with my favorite brown which is milk chocolate and then a flat paintbrush. I just dip half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water and then I blend on a paper towel and that just blends the paint so that I can just you know shade it around my sign. 
And so then I'm going to add some green. I'm going to add a background. So I was kind of, you know, my happy accident turned out great because I wanted to add a little uh, background. Uh, and I do that just with some cru uh, holly green, Christmas uh, color green. It's holly green by Americana and my fan brush and just go and make my faux plaid pattern what I like to do. And so then I'm going to add some black shopper maca because I like the way that it makes my signs stand out. And then uh, once I do that, I'm like, yeah, I want to add a little bit of shading, uh, you know, on one side of those plaid uh, faux plaid you know my background because I just feel that it just adds a little bit of country cuteness to it and so then now it's like okay girl it's time for you to start again so I'm using a number two flat paintbrush and I uh, like air draw it out you know again and figure out where I need to start my letters and where my C of my Christmas like you know, needs to be so that I can kind of cattywampus put my letters. And so guys, I know that there are, you know, lots of people that will reach out and say, you know, hey, do you do any kind of painting uh, tutorials or anything like that? Honestly, the way that I just, I, I do my letters all different. And so like I have mentioned before, I have a uh, found some free fonts that you can download uh, from defont.com. You can and install them on your computer and then that's how you can practice and so that's how honestly that is how I learned just by watching the people that I liked uh, kind of following them and practice 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 that is you know what I've been doing and you can do it too so I love my happy dots and I am just taking my brush just doing you know the little happy dots then once that's all dry what I'll do is just to add uh, just to make my letters pop I'll go back and add some black sharpie marker along one side of it just to not really give it a shadow but just kind of make it stand out a little bit then once all of that is dried then I will take my little liner brush and just give it uh, each happy dot a comma or just a little white highlight just to make my letters pop and just uh, you know have them bring them out and then I did add some paint splattering to my sign and for whatever reason my camera didn't film it but you've seen me paint splatter many times. I added the black and also added the white. I'm starting with a 14 inch wire form as well as 21 inch burlap deco mesh from Hobby Lobby and then uh, some tan pipe cleaners. Now I like to do this method because I usually put a sign on my wreaths and I like to give it a little bit of cushion. So I uh, just go across and I secure the pipe cleaner, then I go across, secure another one, and then I usually make about eight inch poofs on the in the center I go around and kind of like where those bars are I just kind of use that as my guide and then keep going around and then once I get to the place then uh, you know like to where I started then I go back and I just drop down to the outer two rings and then I make between nine and ten inch poofs again I do have some wreath basics tutorials that show you shows you this in real time in slow motion if this was a little bit fast for you. I will put a link in the description box as well as in the iCard. So then now I have 12 pipe cleaners to put deco mesh in. All right, so then for my 10 inch deco mesh, I'm going to be cutting uh, six of each of these. Uh, they all, all of this mesh came from Hobby Lobby. And so this one right here I was going to use, but then later on 
I end up changing it to a different one. So I'll show you that in a bit. All right. So as I said, this burlap came from Habelabe and uh, I cut it at 14 inches. And since it was woven with that little white in it, I tried to go in between that. And I find that I like that much better because I didn't have white everywhere. And so then this uh, burlap with red also at 14 inches. Now guys, to make my cruffles, this is what I do every single time when I make these. I bend over one end uh, and then I bend over the other end I gather it in the middle and then I clamp it and so then I'm doing the same thing this is my favorite way to make a base like this so it depend I would just change up my 10 inch mesh and then I crisscross them like that and the little X pattern and then that's what's going to go into my pipe cleaner. All right, this snowball mesh also came from my Habe Labe, my favorite store, and uh, do the same thing. And so I cut six of each of these out uh, so that I would have, I'm going to alternate them, uh, one bundle and then the other bundle into my burlap uh, mesh wreath. And so then doing the same thing, I just bend over one end, bend over the other end, gather it in the middle, and then clamp it. And so that's how I make my uh, cruffles, guys. Okay, as I mentioned, I have 12 pipe cleaners. So since I have six of each of these bundles, I'm gonna do a zigzag pattern uh, and uh, put one bundle in one and then the other burlap bundle in the other one. And so just to help keep myself straight, I just put one in and then now I will go on to the second one. Every wreath maker has their own way of doing things. I am just here to encourage you to share my tips of what I do for my wreaths and uh, what has worked for me. And so I'm so grateful and thankful that you are here. And so then this is how uh, full my wreath is looking so far, but we're not finished because I am also going to be using this uh, cream and burlap also came from Hobby Lobby. This is in place of that other um, red with the burlap that one I just, it was too much red. And so I cut these at 16 inches because what I'm gonna do is only use one of those I'm using the same technique I bend over the ends and then I gather it in the middle clamp it and then I'm going to put this like in the holes like I consider like in between the the two deco mesh I have like a hole and so then uh, to add some fullness what I do is I put a pipe cleaner around two of those rings and then I put this burlap with the cream mesh in there and then that just adds the fullness all the way around so I ha don't have any any gaps in between my deco mesh of where I have it and so there um, it just makes a very full wreath so now we're gonna head on and let me show you the ribbon choices these are the cute ribbons I'm going to be putting together how I have them laying out is how I'm going to put them into the bundle okay this set right here uh, the one and a half inch came from Hobby Lobby that's the polka dot and then the check came from Michaels and then I cut the two and a half inch at 13 inches and the one and a half inch at 12 inches because I like the way it lays with the just being a little bit shorter so then I make my bundles like this I do kind of the same methods every wreath uh, process these both of these came from Michaels and so, as I said, I like to, you know, I take the extra time just to do this so that I can just put them into the wreath. These um, came from Craft Outlet and that um, striped one, I, I had that in my stash. I'm not quite sure where I got that one from, but the brown check uh, came from Michaels. Okay, so then I use my little tiny attacher, my little stapler, just to make bundles like that. So then now I'm ready to go. I'm also tying some uh, knots of raffia, and that is going to go into one set of the ribbon. So then I just determine which one is going to have the bundle with the three in there, and then I'm just putting the uh, raffia in there. And so then I stay with that throughout the wreath and so then what I'm going to do is alternate these two right here I like to form the re uh, ribbons like that and then I will use the next one to go in the other one and then I do a zigzag pattern uh, all the way around the wreath until I get all of this 
beautiful ribbon into this wreath. And so then um, what I decided to do also is add some jingle bells. We cannot have a cute burlap country reindeer wreath without some jingle bells. And these 30 millimeter jingle bells came from Hobby Lobby. And so then this is how it looks in there. It's just so cute. And I'm just so in love with the way that this wreath turned out. And to attach the reindeer sign to my wreath, I use these one inch cable ties. I just attach them to the back with pipe cleaners and then I thread them on the wreath with a, an upholstery needle. And then this is how I cover the back with some placemats from Hobby Lobby during the fall season. And then I also use a grapevine wire to make a hanger. Then uh, I'm adding some berries and some greenery. And I think all this came from Hobby Lobby. I think that's where I got it from. I've had it in my stash. Anyway, I just pulled pieces of that apart, uh, put a steel pick on the end, and then just included it in the wreath. And it turned out adorable. I just love the way that it turned out. I'm so happy and just, you know, very grateful that I have these gifts to share with so many sweet people. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. God bless.